This will be the 13th problem in my series. In this video, we'll look at using the superposition theorem to solve for a problem. Once I am finished with this series of problems, I'll be posting them in my stand store at this web address. Before proceeding, I want to explain the three web addresses that you will be directed to using. You have already seen the first here. This is a web address of my stand store, which will give you direct access to all of my electrical courses. On the last page, you will find an address that will direct you to obtaining the 50 page crib sheet and notes that will not only be handy when you're taking my courses in my stand store, but also for reference during any time during your career. Here you'll also be asked for your email address, which will not be shared with anybody or distributed in any way, but it will allow me to keep in touch with you and let you know of any additions or updates to my courses and or blogs. Near the end of the video, I'll be introducing you to a supplier of electrical products, which in my estimation are a value worth paying attention to. In this problem, we are to calculate the current through each of the resistors in this DC circuit. This time, we will use the branch current method of solution. The branch current method makes use of the superposition theorem, which states in a linear circuit with several sources, the current through the voltage and the voltage drop for any element in the circuit is the sum of the currents and voltages produced by each source acting independently. To start, I'm going to label all the nodes. There are four nodes in this circuit, as indicated by the letters node A, node B, node C, and node D. Nodes are junctions where two or more current paths come together. A branch is a portion of the circuit consisting of one or more elements in series. The circuit contains two sources and three branches, each branch of which is a current path in the network. Branch ABC consists of power supply E1 and R1 in series. Branch ADC consists of power supply E2 and R2 in series and branch CA consists of R3 only. I am assigning a distinct current of arbitrary direction to each branch of the network, I1, I2, and I3. These currents create voltage drops across each resistor, the polarities of which is determined by the assumed direction of the current and the passive sign convention. The polarity of the power supply terminals is fixed and is therefore not dependent on the assumed direction of current. Notice the words arbitrary and assumed direction. After the calculations are made, if the assumed current is minus, then the current will be flowing in the other direction to the assumed direction. A closed loop is any continuous connection of branches that allows us to trace a path which leaves a point in one direction and returns to the same point from another direction without leaving the network. Now we apply Kirchhoff's voltage law around each closed loop. For loop ABCA or loop one, remember Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that the algebraic sum of changes in potential around any closed loop or path must be zero. Starting at node A, voltage source E1 raises the potential to eight volts. Therefore, plus eight and the resistor voltage changes is minus two I1 for resistor one and minus four I3 for resistor R3. These voltage changes, when added together, must equal zero. So we write that in a form of an equation, as you see here. The currents are the unknowns. For loop ADCA, 
plus 24 for E2, and the resistors drop the voltage by minus I2 for resistor R1, and minus 4I3 for resistor R3. These voltage changes, when added together, must equal zero. We write that in the form of an equation. Plus 24 minus I2 minus 4I3 equals zero. Kirchhoff's current law at node C tells us that I1 plus I2 equals I3. The three equations can now be solved by the elimination method. Firstly, by rearranging the last equation, we can clearly see that we can express I3 in terms of I1 and I2. Now, using the above two equations, I'm going to substitute for I3, which is equal to I1 plus I2. We now have two equations with two unknowns, I1 and I2, the unknowns being the loop currents. We could have gone immediately to these two equations to solve the problem. However, we did introduce a third equation and a third unknown by using Kirchhoff's current law, which, as you recall, generates the Kirchhoff current law equation at the bottom. This points out the fact that there are more than one way to solve or analyze a mesh equation. Solving for I1 and I2 will also give us I3, which is all just mathematics. And I'll leave that up to you to solve as a mathematical exercise. This is a reminder that Anchor is your main supplier for all things involving your power needs, big or small. And there is always plenty of deals to be had by simply browsing to this web address. And remember, this video has been brought to you by PSPT, where you will find electrical training videos when you go to this web address, which will also give you a free copy of my 50-page crib sheets that you can use while viewing any of my courses, or just keep it handy during your everyday work.